Hey guys, it's Brandy with Eternal Harvest and today I'm going to show you how I made this barn door. It's a really light barn door. It kind of mimics a hollow core door for easy sliding and I'll show you how I did it. Hey you guys, thanks for tuning in to my Playroom series. This is video number two. Video number one covers how I installed these shelving in this large closet here. It's about nine feet long on the inside and about 24 inches deep. So if you're interested in that, go hit that video. Video number two, this one will cover the barn door that will cover this space. I had this big empty wall right here and I thought, oh, this is the perfect spot to do a really cool barn door. But I ran into a couple bumps along the way. Number one being, we have some duct torque running along the ceiling here. Um, it drops down and goes back and that's our HVAC for the whole house. Um, which makes this barn door area a little challenging because the slides for barn doors normally rest on the wall above the barn door. And in this instance, I don't have enough space to do that. So I needed to find a slide that would mount to the ceiling and be able to accommodate this space. Now, I'm a little worried about how heavy the door might be because it's a wide door, 64 inches wide and about 78 inches, so it's a big door and I didn't want anything too heavy. I hooked up with Accurite slides, and that will be um, video number three. I'll cover how I install the slide work. I didn't quite get it all finished. There's a couple things I need to figure out, so that will be coming out next Sunday. This will cover just the barn door production. Um, I needed it to be light, like I said, so I was considering a couple different materials like plywood and pine and just the lightest wood I could think of. I didn't want a lot of weight resting here along this, this ceiling mount area here. And so what I ended up doing was essentially creating a hollow core door. I used some two by threes and I used some cedar fencing boards because they're light, they're only about half an inch wide. And I really liked the color and the look of cedar and it was just really light. So I figured it would work really well. Um, if you do not have a joiner or a planer, I would not recommend using the cedar fencing. I did have to join up the edges and plane down the tops just to get it looking good and have it straight for the design that I'm using. If you don't have those things, you might want to consider half inch plywood. That would also be fairly light and it would probably, if you cut that into strips, you could do essentially the same thing that I'm going to do today. So bear that in mind and stick with me and I'll run you through the steps of making my new barn door. Okay, so the first thing I did was cut my two by threes down to size for the frame. I decided to cut them exactly the width and length that I will have the final barn door be. I used my Craig jig to connect the frame parts and essentially made a square. I used tight bond glue with almost all of my projects. They work really great. And then two and a half inch screws. I also like to use my speed square to help me square up the edges as I go around and glue and screw each side. Once that was done, I took my measuring tape right down the middle and I cut another two by three to go down the middle and center of the frame. I Craig jigged this in place as well. And then I made sure to measure and get exactly center across the side of the frame there. Next, I'm gonna measure the two hollow ends on each side and cut a two by three to make that. I'm making an X in the middle of the frame. I glue and screw this with my Craig jig into place as well. I needed these pieces in order to have something to screw the cedar boards into and also just to give the frame some strength. Next, I grabbed my planer. I wanted to clean these up a little bit, but also to make sure they were all about the same thickness. These cedar boards were great because they're inexpensive and super light on the frame, which was one of my major concerns. However, they are crooked, they don't have a smooth edge, so then I ran them through my joiner. And if you don't have a planer and joiner, like I said at the beginning of the video, I would suggest you go with a half inch ply and cut that down into strips so that you have a straight edge and a really nice smooth finished surface. I also just wanna throw in a safety gear plug here. Make sure that you have ear, eye, and mouth protection whenever you're working with these power tools. You wanna to protect those eyes and lungs, you guys. And if there's kickback or anything, I don't know. Just keep your glasses on, keep everything protected, and do your best. 
Okay, now they're ready to cut. Move your saw to a 45 angle and begin the cutting process. Now how I go about this is I usually lay my first 45 down, try to get that centered, that top V and bottom V centered on the middle board. And then you can kind of cut your pieces from there. Don't worry about the outer edge of the door right now of the piece. You can go around that with a circular saw later so you won't have to cut those pieces down at this point. That's one of the things I love about this type of design or mosaic pieces is that as long as you have a 45 cut there in the middle, you don't have to worry about the outer edge. You can give that a straight edge with a circular saw later and it looks more complicated than it actually is. I love this pattern. So I normally just do a quick dry fit as I'm cutting each piece up here and make sure that everything fits accordingly and goes all the way to the edge of the frame. And then I'll take my tight bond glue and I'll glue and nail just along the middle boards and wherever the frame touches the cedar board. I gave that a couple nails. I'm using one and a half inch nails on this here and tight bond to glue. I'll make sure and list everything that I use in the description below. And um, also my safety gear will be listed below with some links as well. I have a DeWalt 18 gauge nailer that I use on almost all of my projects. I love this thing so much. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description below as well. If you do not have a nailer, you can go ahead and screw or you can always hand nail these pieces into place as well. Hand nailing would take a little bit longer, but it will leave a little nicer finish than the screws might. So here I'm just finishing up this side area and then I'll let the glue dry for 24 hours. You don't necessarily need to let this glue cure for that long, but it's quite cold here where I am right now, so I wanted to give it ample time to be able to cure fully before I started messing around with the edges. And this is how it looks all glued and nailed together, and I'll give it some time to cure. Okay, now it's had time to cure, so I'm gonna take my pony clamps here and run my circular saw down the edge there and just rip a straight edge on all four sides. Okay, so I know that I have about one and a quarter inches between the shoe and the blade, the edge of the shoe of my saw and the blade. So I'm marking that and making kind of my own rough track saw if you will with this extra two by three that i had lying around i don't need to make it perfect because i'm gonna go over it with a router and a straight um, router bit to really tighten up those edges so this is just taking off the extra material and i just need to get it really close to the frame but not perfect Okay, so I have a Ryobi battery operated trim router and I'm using a Diablo straight edge bit. This silver bearing on the bottom will follow the frame and cut my top pieces just flush with the frame. These straight edge bits are a lifesaver. They really help clean things up on the edge and give you a nice clean finish that is just flush with what you've got below. I love it. I would suggest getting more than one battery though if you have a Ryobi and it will last you a lot longer and maybe get you through an entire project. My battery dies really fast. And that's it. If you want to take a sander to the edges, you're more than welcome. I did not. I kind of like the crisp right angle there. And now it's so light I was able to lift it up myself, which is pretty good with how big this barn door is. I cleaned up underneath and I was able to flip it upright to get some final shots. Um, so thanks for watching and tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them below. I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I can. And stay tuned next week for the attaching of the slide system and getting this barn door mounted. Thanks guys, talk to you later.